think you're up. Okay. So uh, in your packet, there is no large amounts of text, but hopefully you had the opportunity to go out to the website and download chapters that you to review and look at. And what I'm going to do this month is just provide you an overview of the chapters and what they contain. And next month, we'll talk about the appendices and then any changes that might have happened with the documents from this month's discussion. And then at the March meeting, you'll be asked to release this for public review and comment. And then at the May meeting, we will have a public hearing to adopt the long range plan. So the TAC has uh, been provided a review of the first draft for most of the chapters over the last year. And we've discussed some of the appendices with them. And we've also discussed a number of the policy oriented chapters with the policy committee over the last year. And everything else is old. So what we're going to, there are nine chapters to talk about, and there are 11, currently 11 appendices. You'll note that the CHE, which is Cultural, Historic, and Environmental Data Sources Appendice, we're going to remove. So I'll talk about that a little bit next. Previously in the last year, you know, we looked at and discussed policies and goals in chapters two and three, financial uh, forecasts, and chapter six was discussed back in September. And the proposed system we presented in January with some of the appendices discussed in October and August of last year. Document-wide changes, as uh, you might have noticed, Last year, we start each chapter with a blurb to summarize what's being said in it, hopefully to entice people to read the rest of it and not just the blurb, but if they just read the blurb. Um, and we're putting more footnotes to uh, attribute where we're getting all our sources from. This also represents the regional system as of the end of 2022. So chapter one has been fully rewritten from the this long range plan and want to set the stage for the bigger issues and policies that the plan is meant to address. Some of these, there's also a discussion of the trends over the past 20 years uh, since 1996 or 2000 to 1996. 1996 is when we started the first modern long range plan with the, the federal regulations and going out to 2050. So we're about the halfway point between when we started the modern modern transportation system plans and the target year, horizon year of 2050. Uh, chapter two is policies. We discussed this back in May. There has been no major changes. This just summarizes federal and state policies that guide and influence stats and, and, and or the number of jurisdictions. Uh, there's a table 2-2 on the local transportation plans, basically providing update, there's a date when they will be updated, and that will be revised before the public review draft, as the TAC provides me the uh, most recent estimate of when they might update their TSPs. Chapter 3 was a big change from 2019, mainly in formatting of presenting the goals, the goal statements, and all the associated uh, objectives, performance measures. If you recall, it looks, the goals look like this, where each goal gets a page or a little bit more to provide all the information of what a goal influences in the plan and what might be influencing it either from a federal or possibly with the OTP, the Oregon Transportation Plan. And there haven't been any changes in the goals or the discussion since we discussed it last year. Chapter four is the existing system. This provides an overview of the complete transportation system within Salem, Kaiser, Turner area as of the end of last year. And it, uh, you know, there's one bit that we'll talk about briefly this month and then a little bit more next month, and that is CU CUFCs or Critical Urban Freight Corridors. 
we need to make a change to reflect that the Salem River crossing alignment is no longer part of those corridors and to make a decision or not at that time of what should replace it for that. And we'll discuss critical urban free corridors more in, in March and what they mean. Um, <clears throat> there will also be a couple more changes in the public review draft. Uh, we've added December 2022 transit ridership. <laughs> so this is showing all the month, all the ridership by month uh, from 2019 to 2022. And we've added a little bit of discussion about the aviation master plan and funding of the terminal expansion that the city of Salem uh, okayed last month. Uh, chapter five is about needs and gaps. So if chapter four is saying, here's the systems that exist today, and chapter seven is saying, here's where we want to be, chapter five is saying, where are the gaps that we want projects to be implemented in that are discussed in chapter seven, some of them are in the illustrative as well. So this is just various types of gaps, sidewalks, bicycles, or other needs, such as the needs of bridges to be seismically resilient or not be functionally obsolete, bring them up to good condition. Again, this is another place where the critical urban freight corridors are mentioned, so we'll have to make that, that change will be made one for, uh, after the discussion at next month's meeting. There's a, also a change in the critical urban freight corridor table from the one that you're reviewing, as I noticed that I put in the wrong bridges, and so what was submitted was only the Center Street Bridge. So that's the one that has an active project on it that wants or could use federal funding. And this is just the table that's corrected or will be corrected as we discuss next month. Chapter six, as we discussed last uh, fall, this provides an overview of all the federal, state, and local funds that are forecast to be available for transportation projects from either the city or the state or transit district level, plus what SCATS has available. These are, have been updated to reflect the final draft project list. Um, we finalized the tables in the chapter that show financial constraint, which is federal requirement. New this year, or this version, uh, is discussion of the way ODOT funds their projects. And so we have a funding category ODOT TBD because a lot of money for projects come from the legislature and they're not very predictable looking forward into the future. In some way of saying that, we'll pause. <laughs> Yeah. Chapter seven is the proposed system. We just discussed this last month. Uh, there's been just a few minor edits since last month. I added a little bit more discussion on tourism or tour tourism related impacts of the projects that we're proposing. Uh, this is mainly to appease the feds. They, it's one of their um, planning factors that we need to consider or mention and so that's what we did and we put in a little bit of uh, information on how much the bike and ped gaps are being reduced by the projects. Chapter 8 is still in progress. Um, there's a version on the website for review or you could wait until next month when the, the numbers will be finalized. This is a unique chapter in that it represents the impacts, potential impacts of the proposed projects, and then for either cultural, historic, or environmental resources. We do this analysis, then we send it to the resource agencies at the federal, state, and tribal level to get their comments, then bring their comments back in and put it in public review drafts. So we're during the comments from the public or uh, the resource agencies, they made some comments regarding mitigation of. Uh, mainly for wetland discussion from the Department of State Lands. Uh, they, there are some comments on some new data sources for historic or wetland areas. And so those maps and analysis are being redone. And we revise the language to 
reference the, the data sources in the chapter, not referencing the, the appendix that or appendix that is being removed. Final chapter is outstanding issues. This is, discusses the issues that are not addressed by projects being uh, presented, proposed for one reason or another, financial, uh, political, or there hasn't been studied and it hasn't come up. Uh, solution hasn't been identified. So those that's a brief overview of the chapters. And I don't know if anyone has had a chance to review any of these or if they have any questions or save your comment questions for next month. Um, I could also go into the appendices if you want to do that or if you want to go on to the next agenda item to the discussion. Let's press pause here. Any questions or comments on the um, the chapters so far, uh, Dr. Carney? Thank you, Chair Clark, um, and thank you, Ray. I mean, thank you also for not sending us 248 pages of document this month. Um, that wouldn't fit through my mail slot, so I'm not sure what our postman post person would do. Um, anyway. Uh, if we were, because I've I've gone through and and looked at some places where I could suggest some shifts in language, um, probably nothing major, uh, but adding kind of from my perspective a more um, sort of holistic lens to the plan itself. Um, how would we best share those comments with you, or would we share them with the committee as a whole? Um, just interested in what is our best way to give feedback on this at this point. Sure. Uh, any any comments, <laughs> editing, you know, anything of that nature, just send send me the comments and I'll integrate them into the, the document as, as appropriate. And we will go from there. We'll also, you know, keep track of what, we're not really in the public comment period, but we'll track, you know, what changes are being made so we can have a discussion, you know, provide a complete list of what changes we need based on people's comments. And I suppose if it's a if it's a comment that's more of a something that we want to bring up to the policy committee because it's something that you all need to decide a direction, then we'll bring it back to you for discussion. Yeah. But if it's just, you know, wording, minor wording or things like that. Sure. Okay, super. Thank you. And it, um, it'd be really great to have any comments before what's uh, the 21st of March, because that would be the mailing date, theoretical mailing date for next policy committee meeting. However, any then on March 28th, we would start the public comment period. So um, we, we could also get comments at that point up through May 12th. Then we want to wrap things together for the final document for presentation. So with those dates in mind. Okay, that's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Any other questions or comments at this time? Full disclosure, I skimmed those. <laughs> Those kind of pieces to kind of see where we're at. Um, I did go on vacation. All right. So I've got more reading ahead, as do we all. All right. Um, did you want to go over kind of where we're with the, with the appendices at this point? Or? I can do it fairly quickly. Yeah. We need to restart the um, PowerPoint. Okay. So, um, first appendice uh, A is on the population employment forecast. This is the forecast for 2050 within the Scats region. It provides a lot of information at this for city county level. Uh, so, you might have use for this beyond just this document. Uh, it's been updated to reflect the latest forecast from PSRC, the Population Research Center at Portland State. and data from the Oregon Employment Department. 
Uh, Appendix B is a new one, it's bibliography. It's basically, I'm just putting on all these courses. I'm trying to put, somebody wants to find a federal document that we're using or a state document, here's where you will look. So it is a work in progress. So give me ideas of what more to be added in there. Um, I figure it will take at least another update, meaning another four years to make this fully flushed out. Appendix C, uh, Appendix C is a project evaluation process. We discussed this sometime last year, that just how the weighting works, how the projects were evaluated to uh, make the recommendation to the policy committee on what should be included in a financial constraint list. Appendix D is also another one that is useful outside of the plan and shared with the TIP, and it just provides it all the definitions that we use in this acronym build. Endeavor. Uh, e is environmental justice. Uh, we revised the process a little bit from 2019, and this is detailed in here. Uh, this is all the process that we're using in the TIP as well, and we're making the language consistent between the discussion in Chapter 8, and, which is impacts and this. Uh, I is illustrative projects. Um, this is just reflects the, the projects that were not selected to be included in the financially constrained plan. Uh, we had, knew this year, we added a map to show where these projects would be. Appendix J is for the feds. It's basically a crosswalk of the federal, state, and regional goals uh, for gaps and how they correspond with each other. Some clarity, some minor edits for clarity. <clears throat> Chapter three provides the non-federal, non Planner ease way of looking at everything. This is mainly to for the feds. It just shows how we meet some of their requirements. App Appendix K, I wish to get rid of because it's out of date and um, hasn't been updated since 2008, 7, 11, one of those. It's been a while. Appendix O is outreach. This is one that we'll finalize after the public hearing. It's just going to summarize. How we want to, how we talk to people, who, what they said, and what we did with their uh, comments. This is from the public, the uh, resource agencies, and other uh, jurisdictions. Uh, Appendix P, you've seen part of this last year when you adopted the federal performance measures, and this would also include uh, the ones that we discussed this morning or 20 minutes ago. Just uh, another federal requirement to talk about the federal performance measures, the current targets, how we did in the last performance reporting period, which was 2018 to 2022, what the targets are for the next performance reporting period, 2022 to 2026, and you know how well it's, it's gone. Appendix R is resiliency. This has been updated a little bit. We have a nice new disaster map showing all the Potential disasters that can happen, seismic flooding, landslides, et cetera. Uh, some of this is made to lay the framework to allow locals to uh, apply for PROTECT grants, which is a new grant program from Federal Highway, promoting resilient operations for transformative, efficient, and cost effective transportation. Hmm. Um, we need to confirm with the feds that this is actually sufficient for that, but. We hope that it will be. And that is it on the premises. <laughs>